Welcome, Thomas, uh, and welcome back uh, to Portugal. Uh, you closed the season. Initially, uh, you know, this this uh, our interview was designed to just recap the, the the drilling results and and the seasons and 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 your view. But I think we need to be starting with. Uh, Uh, the, you know, the, the recent developments in the company as such and the, the, the raises. Uh, the company just raised it, uh, $4 million uh, at six cents. And, you know, unfortunately, just a couple of days after uh, took a hit, probably uh, um, because, uh, you know, people didn't take it well that the field season was, was uh, terminated. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and consequently, then uh, the, the underwriter withdrew from the rights offering. Um, I know you're not, in, uh, you're, you're not involved on the corporate side, but still uh, you are a, a big shareholder and uh, maybe uh, you have your own view on, 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 on or you want to comment on, on that. Well, look, yeah, yes, it's, it's good to see you again, Sven. Thank you for this interview. Slightly different uh, surroundings than our previous interview on board the ship in Greenland. Yes. I, I do want to stay by, uh, start by saying just uh, what, a, what a wonderful season we did have in Greenland. Uh, it was really productive. Yeah. New discovery at Cascata, obviously assays are awaited. But I was really pleased with uh, you know, what the team accomplished Uh, and given difficult circumstances, you know, Greenland closed its border uh, halfway through the field season. So everybody put in a really long stint and, and we pulled it off. Uh, so I'd like to start by saying that. And then, look, with it, uh, you're correct in what you said. Like my focus has been I've been uh, on a ship in Greenland for, for the past few months. And really, that's that's where I my role in the company is. Uh, Uh, focusing solely on that and yes. getting yes. the technical uh, objectives uh, accomplished. Um, and so we just recently returned home, as you say, to here in Portugal. And really my time is now being occupied by uh, post-field season activities. So we have the drill core is currently on its way being shipped here to Portugal so we can do further work to it and more sampling. Uh, as you may appreciate in Greenland on a ship, Uh, our capacity was limited. Uh, yes. We did get um, samples off to Australia. We're expecting the results for those shortly. Uh, we have another batch, which is currently on its way to a laboratory in Spain. And then the remainder of the core is on its way to Portugal, uh, where we're going to be working on myself with some of my colleagues here to do uh, further sampling and logging that we couldn't achieve at the end of the season. Um, so that's all ongoing and really is the, the focus of my activities. Uh, you know, from a corporate side of things, uh, Uh, the board of Conoco uh, made those decisions. Uh, I'm not on. I'm not employed by Conoco. I'm employed by Longland, uh, the subsidiary. Yes. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the the board of directors made a decision uh, with the, the capital raise. Uh, yes, four million was recently raised, and uh, then they. Uh, well, it was only yesterday that uh, they they uh, they uh, cancelled the rights issue. Yes, uh, really not uh, in a position where I can make comments on that. Okay. Uh, but the only thing I can say is that, you know, the, the assays are on their way and um, I, I couldn't be more excited, to be honest. Okay, agreed. Let's, let's then focus uh, on, uh, you know, I might be needing to talk about uh, having an interview with, uh, with the, the, the MD then uh, on, on the corporate side. So let's mm -hmm. focus um, on, on, the, on the technical uh, success. Uh, bigger picture, you started completely with a virgin ground, so to speak, within just eight weeks, you accomplished three and a half thousand meters of drilling. And as far as I can, uh, can tell, to me, those look like three new discoveries uh, with, with uh, essays, of course, still pending. How do you, would you rate those amongst each other and, and, and differentiate them a little bit? And Mickey saw the cup in Cascata, the three ones. Yeah, sure. So, so with the ones that we, we advertised before the field season started, uh, that was the Mickey prospect uh, for magmatic sulfides 
and then the sorted cat prospect, uh, where we're also seeing magmatic sulfides with nickel sulfides and then orogenic gold. So those are the two that we were really focusing on this year. Um, with, with Mickey, uh, that's what we went to first. Uh, we had the electromagnetic conductors there, and uh, it, was, it was quite remarkable. The, the first drill hole, we actually targeted one of the, uh, uh, the, the, the lower conductive strength. Out of the three conductors we had, we started with the one of the lowest intensity. Reason being is, is logistically it was simpler for us. And, uh, and I guess also I'm an, I'm an eternal optimist, so I was quite uh, confident with what we'd seen there. But lo and behold, that first drill hole, we then did hit the, uh, the sulfides. Um, and then with the, the consequent holes there, uh, we're seeing different sulfide textures. So we're seeing these semi-massive sulfides, we're seeing these net matrix sulfides. Uh, it, you know, for the first time this had ever been drilled and uh, you know, over a vast area and uh, to, to get those intercepts you know, from, from a, a personal point of view is, is incredibly satisfying, uh, particularly after the, the years of uh, work we've done leading up to this. Uh, of course, assays are resulted, uh, awaited, uh, but uh, those will be uh, with us shortly. Uh, then at sorty cap, so that one we were drilling uh, an IP anomaly, and there we've got uh, gold graded surface before and nickel sulfides. Uh, so we drilled that in three different locations, uh, stepping down uh, through the stratigraphy there, targeting this IP anomaly. Uh, and once again, at yeah, well played to the geophysicist because with it, uh, the target depth, as soon as we achieve that target depth, then bang, there we were starting to see the sulfides. Yes. Uh, so, so it, it certainly proved that the, 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 uh, the tools that we've been using to, to guide the drilling were successful. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, Greenland, it, it's the first time it's been drilled and we're seeing unexpected geology as well. Uh, so I was, I was really pleased with, uh, uh, you know, at Sorty Cap again, there we were going through a, an ultramafic rock where we'd seen uh, nickel sulfides in the past. And then we go through this zone of magnetite and we're seeing disseminated sulfides throughout it. You get to the base of it and you're starting to see these lenses and uh, thick piles of sulfide. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a steep learning curve, I'll be honest with you, like to see some of this, it wasn't expected. And, and yeah. going back to Mickey with one of the drill holes where we're targeting magmatic sulfides, you know, hey presto, we, we, we see what appears to be a porphyry style rock where we're seeing molybdenite in it. And so we were really running on our feet there with the geology, which is yeah. a, a wonderful problem to have. And then with Cascata, uh, so that was, and, and also a bit of background for you, Sven. Cascata, it is uh, Portuguese for waterfall. So it's a, it's a tip of the hat to, uh, to, my, uh, to my darling wife, um, who's Portuguese, but um, she's a, a VMS uh, specialist, actually. So I married a geologist, keep it in the family. And uh, so with that one, uh, we were flying past, we saw it, we knew that this area was interesting. Uh, there's this wonderful waterfall. And then where the waterfall was, it was, it was a very rusty zone. And previous years, uh, that waterfall wasn't there. It was actually quite a lot of ice in that area. And that's since receded. So we went there and I uh, went for a trot around and, and lo and behold, there on surface, we've seen these sulfides. And uh, it was just something that we couldn't ignore. It was, we knew that we were, get, we were about halfway through the field season, perhaps a little bit more. Uh, and so it's like, okay, it's now or never. Do we wait until a future year or do we just put a rig there right now? And uh, we made that decision to do it. And I'm, I'm very pleased that we did. Um, so we put out a press release about the, uh, you know, the okay. visual results of that first hole. And, yeah. and there it was, we were seeing uh, massive sulfide lenses um, you know, throughout uh, a lot of that hole. And the yes. stratigraphy certainly supports uh, our interpretation of it being a VMS style occurrence. Yes. Um, so, you know, <laughs> it's a geologist's paradise and uh, I'm, I'm just so happy that we were able to achieve all this. That, that's, that's well put. Actually, uh, um, the VMS uh, structure uh, of, of Cascata that you last mentioned is, is, is really uh, astounding. If you if 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 it proves to be uh, carrying grade, of course, uh, but literally starts at surface. You were actually one of the pictures that were uh, also also I think in the in the annual uh, uh, report showed you standing on on top of of of, of, of Cascada, all mineralized, and that mm. that's probably one of the beauties as well in Greenland. You see the mineralization, and you see it in three D, but. Yeah. Getting back to, to Cascata specifically, that's 275 mm -hmm. meters of, of shale and, 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 and layered stuff. And then below that, 
that there seems to be some magmatic. Uh, yeah. How does that fit together, and and what do you make of it, uh, given your your limited, uh, you know, the limited understanding of of the grades, but still you understand the geology, I guess. Mm, definitely, like this. This was a another very welcome surprise. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, keep the geology keeping us on our toes. Yeah. Uh, with this one, we what we wanted to do was to drill through as much of that uh, volcano sedimentary sequence as possible at Cascata, yes. Yes. Uh, so that we have a, a broader understanding of the, the geology, and then go through into the underlying basement rock. And so we went through that, and then we intersected Gabbro, and uh, it was quite a coarse grained Gabbro. And uh, I mean, my speciality, what I what I was educated in uh, since leaving uh, uh, university, was um, uh, magmatic sulfides, particularly layered mafic intrusions. So ones in Australia, South Africa, did my thesis on the Bushveld, uh, and I'd also worked on the Scareguard project, which is very close by to where we are. Yes. And looking at the the Gabbro in this uh, particular occurrence beneath Cascata it really got my attention very quickly. We were starting to see the, the iron uh, oxides there, seeing uh, uh, you know, magnetite, ilmenite, nice plagiocrase, uh, apatite. And, and then we were starting to see differentiation in there. There's some sort of fractionation going on. And uh, it, it definitely looks like a, a, a layered intrusion. Um, so we went through that, about, I think it's about 150 meters uh, until we terminated in the hole, but we were persisting uh, through. So if we kept on going, we would have hit more. So it's quite a thick intercept. Um, originally, we think that possibly we'd intercepted a, a gabbroic dike, which uh, or a sill, sorry, should I say a sill, which are known in this area. However, the, um, uh, the composition of this and the, uh, the, the, the sheer size of it, uh, it leads us to believe that perhaps we're onto something possibly a little bit larger. Uh, so now with all that drill core coming across to, uh, to Portugal, we're going to be going through that in detail. And you can do very simple um, uh, elemental ratios uh, to then see if uh, perhaps it's undergone sulfur saturation, if there is a mineralized reef there. Um, but of course, also the assays uh, are weighted with that. Who knows, maybe we, we even possibly hit it. Uh, but with other occurrences like this, so Scareguard, for instance, the mineralization uh, is actually not visual. You cannot uh, see it. I see. Okay. Uh, so uh, this one is very, very exciting. Um, and this location is known uh, for large uh, magma chambers, laid major intrusions, and all the ones in the, the East Greenland vicinity have mineralization of some kind or another. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I think the other day when we spoke, uh, you you mentioned that you believe uh, uh, Ryberg will will see many. Uh, 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 doctorates and, and theses being, being uh, written about. I, I, I imagine that will be the case. Um, it, it's 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 still intriguing to see you know that massive intercept VMS style with visible uh, uh, sulfides, uh, um, and and there's a second hole that that uh, remains to be uh, uh, released, I guess. Um, but according to, to what you said the other, you know, at, a, at another occasion, you said that 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 second cascata hole is is pretty much still being shipped and then and then only processed. Uh, so so that's right. We'll get onto that as a priority. So the, the last uh, hole that was drilled at Mickey, the last one at the Salt Cap. Uh, sorry, at Cascata. Uh, right. As soon as that arrives here, we'll be on to it immediately. So we have a facility here in Lisbon, we've got a warehouse, we've got the geologists. Yeah. And uh, so our intention is to release that as soon as it gets here. So it's currently on its way from a, a vessel from uh, Iceland over here. So yes. I can imagine that we're looking at maybe a fortnight or so. Yeah, okay. Um, of course, that that is, you said it, it's a priority, probably also because um, for me, at least, my understanding is that Cascata is a is a little a little bit of a gift on, on top of everything to uh, to the magmatic intrusions that you uh, uh, that you were chasing uh, at, uh, at at the beginning of the program, because uh, it's only six kilometers from the coast and and it looks like it's it is expanding. Uh, if is it is it even uh, does it even make sense to compare this to, for example, what we what we are used to see in the market, like those big porphyries in 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 South America that you know take it as being a success if they have a couple of hundred meters of 0.5 percent? Is, is is how do how do you as a geologist would compare the one to the other? VMSs usually should be polymetallic number one, and they should be higher grade. 
Is that is yeah. that a fair expectation, or is that something you would just say it's still speculative? Of course, it's speculative. No question. Well, look, it. It, it is of course speculative, but it's always nice to dream and uh, you know uh, yeah, to speculate on these things. I mean, a good example is uh, that uh, uh, where I am right now, I'm, I'm I'm right next to the Iberian pyrite belt. Yes. I have some huge VMS deposits here, and uh, never score uh, Estrella, uh, and. They, their minds that just keep on going. Uh, I don't think that in our lifetimes or our children's lifetimes they'll be exhausted. So, um, and, but of course, every VMS deposit is different. But for for a project to work in East Greenland, a very realistic, it, it has to have, it has to have scale. It has to have grade. It has to have tonnage. Yes. Uh, we we know of many deposits in Greenland have been discovered. Uh, it, it's hugely prospective. Uh, but they haven't uh, resulted in mining operations, most of them. Yes. Uh, so for us, it's uh, one of the reasons for our focus on East Greenland is that we think that is a location that's achievable for a mining operation. So it's proximity to Europe, facing Iceland and so on, uh, yes. energy options. Uh, but then also it's under, you know, underexplored in nature. So yes. to find a VMS, to find magnetic sulfides, to find an orogenic gold occurrence, <laughs> all in one license package, it, yeah, I mean, really, and for, for a first field season there, the first time this area has ever been drilled, yes. I just couldn't have been happier. So it's... Uh... Okay, uh, now I think one of the reasons why the market also took it took this uh, dive um, is, is that kind of currently the expectation is, okay, nothing is going to happen or not much is going to happen between now and uh, the, the, the restart of the, of the next uh, field season. In, in let's say I think you were mentioning April May next year, mm. but I, but I I, my, I would say that is probably not not really accurate because there's still you know the, the evaluation to follow and that might take even until early next year. Yeah, look, uh, the assay results will be rolling in. Uh, I'd probably say up until Christmas time, uh, they're going to be coming in over that period. Yes, uh, it's just the, the time that it takes. Um, uh, with those, we we do we are quite well prepared. Uh, certainly, with the amount of data that we captured in Greenland, uh, yes. and uh, we're starting to do uh, you know, three dimensional modeling on it and yes. so on interpretations. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, once we have those results early in the new year, uh, we will have the basis of the the a firm plan for next year. But I do know from experience, uh, having worked in this location, so yeah, since 2008, that we can get in in April. Uh, I had done that before. Uh, the, uh, the the climatic conditions are good. Uh, the obstacle that we have is um, snow cover. So uh, as long as you don't mind a little bit of manual labor, which is what we did in April, which is digging out some snow. And you know, anyone that lives in North America, particularly in Canada and so on, is, uh, is well yeah. used to doing that each morning to get their car out. So yeah. really, apart from that, the, the daylight hours are good and the conditions are quite stable. So yeah. we have the, the rigs there on site. We've got, we've kept the three rigs there. Uh, we have the fuel stored there. Uh, so really there is, there's no excuse for us not being able to have a, a longer field season next year. And, and yeah. fingers crossed um, the, the global pandemic uh, starts to ease as well and, and yeah. makes the, the travel easier. Yeah, okay. Well, um, so for bottom line is uh, it's now, let's say end of September. Um, what if you had to guess uh, what's the sequence of uh, let's say from now towards the end of the year it's going to be releases of of uh, of essays would you would you think that uh, Mickey would be probably the first one because that was the first one drilled uh, yeah. would you would you also maybe prioritize the cascata ones because there's two holes only and uh, and they they look at the what the first one that came out looked uh, really compelling visually at least uh, mm -hmm. Would you would you maybe fast track that one, or would you just go by order of of a sequence of of the drilling? It, it'll be coming in sequence. So what we have to do is, you know, once the results come in, we'll be then get, you know uh, releasing those to the market. Once we have the results for you know entire holes, we won't be doing it in a piecemeal approach, but uh, to do it so that uh, uh, the the reader can understand it in its entirety. Uh, it's um, so that, and then also we have. Uh, and I didn't even mention that we did the uh, the regional uh, airborne survey as well. So that's uh, magnetic and radiometrics over the majority of the license area. 
So that's in the process of being interpreted as we speak. So that's another bit of news flow that will be coming out. Uh, so, but really, it's 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 uh, the first thing will most likely be uh, the uh, the visual logs of of the second hole at Cascata and then the last hole at Mickey, uh, giving our uh, sort of interpretation what we see there, uh, assay results. Uh, and then the uh, and then the uh, interpretation for the uh, geophysical survey, and then following that um, with a little bit of time for us to to, to comprehend what we've uh, received, would then be coming out with the plan of uh, of attack for next year and what we deem to be the priorities to focus on. Okay, well, thanks for 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 that uh, interview, and uh, we'll certainly uh, circle back, hopefully uh, with with then essays being being released. Uh, and let's keep fingers crossed that they are, uh, you know, match the, the good visuals, I would say. Okay. Definitely. All right. Well, look, thank you very much, Sven. Always good. To